we have a pendulum. It consists of a 20 kilogram slender rod. So this part right here has a mass of 20 kilograms and a 30 kilogram disc. So it's down here, that's our disc that has a given mass as well. Determine the mass moment of inertia of the pendulum system, it's made of two parts, about the axis perpendicular to the page and passing through the point O. So here's point O right there. Okay. Here's the answer. Here is G for the rod, and here is G for the, the disc. And so I would calculate I sub bar for first the rod and then for the disc, so my two parts. So what is the formula for I bar for the rod? Wasn't that one twelfth? The mass times the length squared. And so in this case, it's one twelfth. And then what is the mass of the rod? 20 kilograms. And then what is the length of the rod? 0.45 meter squared. So maybe I should have left a little more room. I'll try to write that in right here. That seems to be 0.3375 kilogram meter squared. You can put your units up in the header, uh, kilogram per times meter squared for everything in, in down here. And then what about the disk? What was the, the equation for the disk? Wasn't it one half m, the radius of the disk squared? So we have one half the mass of the disk, 30 kilograms. And then the radius of the disk, 0.1 meter squared. Since I put the units up there, I'm, I'm just going to leave them off. Okay. And so when we compute that, it goes out to be 0 0.150. Okay, now I need to find that distance that I'm going to shift it. Okay, so for the rod, what is the distance that we shift to get up to O? It'd be 0.45 divided by 2, 22.5, right? Uh, 0 0.225 meters. All right. How about the distance that we shift G up to point O for the disk? Yeah, 0.45 plus 0.1, so that's equal to 0 0.55. All right, and then we're going to say now let's calculate using the parallel axis theorem for each of those about point O. So what was the formula again? I bar plus D squared M. Maybe I should have put a column for M in there, but running out of room here. So anyway, this is going to be 0.3375 plus 0.225 meters squared times the mass of 20 kilogram. And lo and behold, it comes in at 1.35. This has units. I forgot to write them up here. Kilogram meter squared. That's the units. Somebody says... That's at the end of the rod. And, and didn't we just work that out? Wasn't that one-third m l squared? And you look back, where did was it? Right here. One-third m l squared isn't 0, 0.0 for our problem at the end of that rod. And if you just put in one-third m l squared, you'll get 1.35. It's consistent. So we went a long way, but that's okay. All right, and then we use the parallel axis theorem here. It's 0.15 plus the distance 0.55 squared times the mass of 30 kilogram. And that comes in at a whopping 9.225. So when we sum this column, summing this value and that value, we find that it comes in at 10 point, whatever, 6 I round off. 10.5, blah, 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 10.6, and that's our answer.